Let's start by looking at these economic systems themselves, shall we? Just like in political systems, there is a serious difference in ideology between the left and the right on how economic power should be distributed within the state or how wealth should outright be distributed within the state and on the role of the government in either actively being a part of making economic power equal to all or conversely, staying out of the economic picture altogether and letting the economy take care of itself. We should check back in with our friends from the left and right and see what they think about this. Hey fellas, what do you guys think about all things economic and wealth distribution within a state? On the conservative right, we like to conserve, keep the same, conserve tradition, conserve political power, and of course conserve economic power in the hands of those that already have it. The old school, the old ways, that's the age old tradition. People work hard for themselves, for their family, for their kin, for their tribe. They take care of themselves and take care of their own. If you are smart, if you work hard, if you innovate, if you are industrious, if you make a better product or a cheaper way to produce stuff, you should thrive and make money and you should be allowed to keep the fruits of your labor. Hell, you earned it. You deserve it. Let others do the same things for themselves. What's the problem with that? We on the liberal left want to liberate or free up ourselves from static tradition by incorporating current perspectives and new knowledge to change the old ways and free up economic and political power for everyone to share for free. Wee! Especially when it comes to economics. We are for a more equitable distribution of wealth for all the members of the society. I mean, what about the poor masses? What about the old people? What about the disabled? What about the sick or the dumb or the dumber or the crack babies? The folks who can't go out and work hard and innovate and make lots of money for themselves, should they just be left behind to starve to death on the roadside? Is that the society that we want to create for ourselves and our children? We should make things economically more equal for all so that no one gets left behind. Spread the wealth, spread the love, baby. See, those lefties are trying to redistribute my wealth. Damn commies. I earned it with my hard work and my investment or my daddy gave it to me. Why the hell would I want to have my shizzle passed around to all those other peoples in the society? If they want wealth, they need to earn it for themselves or rely on their family, their community, or their church to help them out. Not the state government and my tax dollars. You capitalist pig never takes into consideration that the roads and the bridges, the infrastructure of the state, the workers who toil in the factories, all of these things are elements in their business success and they have to chip in a little to pay for that stuff. It's not just your wealth. Every business success is partly due to the society in which they operate and we need to take care of that society, not just look out after number one all the time. So given your stances on wealth, what should the government's role be in the economy of your state? On the liberal left, we think the government of the state should be directly involved in regulating or outright controlling aspects of the economy in order to use the wealth generated to benefit its citizens in a great variety of ways. Oh, hell no. Keep the government out of the economy and keep the government out of business's hair altogether. Let businesses and corporations and companies run things. They know what they're doing. That's what they do. They know how to best make the money, how to streamline efficiency, keep costs down, and thus best how to keep the state's economy going and growing. Isn't economic growth and more money good for everybody? It's the only way to truly make everyone in the society richer overall by having businesses bring in the industries, which bring in jobs, which bring in incomes and therefore raises the wealth of everyone in the society. Dude, you must be freaking joking. If you let business do anything they want, they would pollute the environment, 
pay workers pennies on the dollar, have child labor in the factories, have unsafe working conditions, and, and overall would just screw over anybody and everybody to make an extra buck on the bottom line. And speaking of which, in this scenario, wealth would be concentrated into fewer and fewer and fewer hands of the company owners, of the corporate boards, of the stockholders. And that would make for more and more impoverished masses in the society, all working for the man. The government must protect its citizens by regulating or controlling big businesses and the economy in general, and must redistribute some of the wealth of the whole society to the whole society via services and benefits. You're the one who's a joke, liberal boy. As soon as a big bloated bureaucracy and a bunch of politicians start regulating business and handing out free services to everyone in the society, your economy is screwed. What the hell do a bunch of bureaucrats know about raising cattle or setting up Walmart stores or transporting energy to markets or how best to serve out health care? Every regulatory law and corporate tax that is passed limits the capacity for business to make money, to create jobs, to be the most effective they can be, which stifles an economy, limits economic growth, and makes your economy uncompetitive. Too much government red tape and intervention makes for a crappy ass economy. And that's not good for anybody in the society, not even the poor people. And by the way, what the hell is wrong with wealth accumulation? Should I not get to be richer because I work harder than you? Because I'm smarter than you? Uh, because I work longer hours than you? Because I invest more than you? I mean, I'm taking the risk here. I'm the one that's sweating. I should be allowed to make as much money as I want to. All right, all right, all right, all right. This always gets out of hand with these guys. They're crazy. We need to wrap this up. You got one minute to summarize. Each of you, go. We on the left feel that the government should be used as a tool of empowerment politically and economically. It must protect its citizens and ensure some level of wealth distribution, which means that the government, one, should be involved directly in some economic activities. Two, should regulate private businesses by establishing minimum wage laws, workplace safety laws, environmental laws, and lots of other things. Three, should use generated wealth from the industries or taxes to distribute the wealth of the society by providing social services to the peoples, like public education, welfare, unemployment insurance, health care, disability insurance, and lots of other things. So in general, the left is pro-wealth distribution, pro-benefits, pro-business regulation, pro-taxation, pro-workers, pro-labor, pro-people. We of the right feel that the government should keep its damn nose out of the economy and out of business altogether. Business creates the industries and jobs and wealth of the society. Let them do their job. Therefore, point one, government should never be involved directly in economic activity. They could never run anything as well as a private business would. Two, government should minimize regulation and taxation of private businesses as much as possible because it stifles growth. So don't do it. Three, government should only provide a minimum of social services to citizens. That's the job of the private sector too, quite frankly. I mean, a military is marvelous. Cops are cool and building roads is good. But I don't want my tax dollars going to some jobless crackhead so he can get free health care to replace all of his teeth after he busted them all out smoking rock. So we are pro-free market capitalism, pro-wealth concentration, pro-business, anti-regulation, anti-taxation, and anti-big government in general in terms of its economic role in the society. Okay, some awesome points from both sides of the aisle, as usual. I end up agreeing with ideological points from both places. And that's really what state governments and citizens wrestle with all the time. If and how to distribute wealth, government benefits, and economic power to the peoples within the state. However, unlike the diverse array of political systems created from the left to the right when people were debating about how to distribute political power, there are really only three major types of economic systems that states organize themselves by. And, and perhaps it's maybe only really one. <laughs> what, what am I talking about only one? <laughs> 
don't want to get too far ahead. We'll start with the big three. Uh, how do states organize their economies to create environments for their citizens to create businesses and economic activities and jobs and cash and ultimately wealth? Or perhaps does the state do it all for them? Hmm? What? <laughs> yeah. Let's once again start from the left and proceed to the right looking at the big world economic spectrum. On the extreme left of the world economic spectrum is, of course, communism. Communism, didn't we talk about that already back in politics? Yes, and we pointed out then that communism is a political and an economic system all rolled into one. That's why it's so damn confusing. In a communist state, the state government's going to take care of everything political and economic and distribute it all equally out to all the people. Doesn't that sound quaint? Now, what does it mean economically? In a communist economy, there is communal ownership of all resources and all properties and all means of production. Everyone in the state has an equal piece of the pie. Okay, let's step back and take these terms one at a time. Communal ownership? What's that? Well, communal, like a commune, like a bunch of folks hanging out, all sharing everything. They work out in the fields, they all share their food. There's there's no individual property ownership. Everybody shares everything. They live together and it's a bunch of hippies and smoke dope and it's all great. Yeah, a commune. A communal commune, and you do that at the state scale, it's communism. Everybody is in this together. And think about the roots of the words again now, commune, communism, community. Everything is owned by everybody. We all share it all. Again, at the state scale now, we all own what? We all own all the stuff, all of the property, the resources, and the means of production. The property is obvious. It's land. I mean, you may live on a piece of land in a communist state, but we all actually share that. We're just letting you hang out there. And I'll hang out here, and this other person will hang out there. So all the property is communally held, although the resources are community held. And that's all the stuff, the tangible stuff, like all the food grown on that land, and all the oil and natural gas resources underneath that land, all the water in the land, all the zinc in the land, all of it is all owned by all of us, as are the means of production. And that's the factories and the industries that take raw resources and make something out of it. But it's also kind of all the businesses, all of the services, all of the doctor services and lawyer services, all of that is all communally held. We're all in this together. We all share it all. And the state government provides whatever we all need based on need so that I need housing and food and health care, uh, and the state gives it all to me. And in return, I kind of go do my job, whatever it is my job is, and I communally give back and do whatever I do best for the rest of the community, right? So say I'm a farmer, and I'm going to grow some food. I grow food really good. And I'm not going to charge money for that food. I'm just going to go give it to people or give it to the grocery stores that will then distribute it across the country and give it to the people as they need it. And then when I get sick and I need a doctor, I just go to the doctor. There's no bill. He just provides his services to me, to the society. Again, we're all in this together. We're all sharing. Everything is communally held. But wait, I said the state provides everything. Ah, I'm confusing you already. Didn't I say that we all own all this stuff? Then how can the state provide it if we all own it? Well, the state apparatus is simply there to manage all this economic activity and distribute out everything to all the peoples. That's its only function. It's what it's supposed to be anyway. Because economies are really big and countries are really big. And so me as a farmer, I, I, I can't get my... I can grow the corn, but I can't take it a thousand miles away to hand it to somebody who needs it. You need that state structure to say, okay, we're going to organize all this. So here's where the people grow food, and then we'll have a bunch of trucks which pick up the food here, take it to grocery stores, and we'll make sure that there's a certain amount of doctor's offices around in a certain number of places so that everybody in the country has access to all the stuff they need. They're the grand purveyor, organizer, and distributor of everything. That's the role of the state government in a communist society. And isn't it an awesome utopia? Everybody gets whatever they need and everything's happy and fun and we can roast marshmallows around the campfire and sing kumbaya. 
Yeah, it never really works out that way, but we'll come back to that. Let's go to the other side of the spectrum first. Let's go extreme right on the world economic spectrum, and of course, that would be capitalism. Free market, unbridled, full-on capitalism, that is. And in a capitalist economy, all the resources, all the properties, all means of production are in private hands, in private ownership by individuals, people like me and you. And ultimately there is ownership by the few. What? That's tricky. Hold on. Look at the root of the word first. Capitalism. Those that own the stuff have capital, have the means, have money to run the businesses which do the stuff. And everything, everything in a purely capitalist society is in private hands. Again, people like me and you, we say, hey, I want to go buy a farm. I'm going to grow food. I'm going to start a doctor's office. Me, I will do it with my own hard work and labor and my own capital. I'm going to start this and then I will sell my services to other people. And in this situation, what does the state government do? Nothing! All right? They own and control nothing. Stay out of the way, government. Let the individuals make the economic decisions. And simple market principles like supply and demand will provide the stuff for the people as they need it. Same example, people need food. Well, I'm a farmer, all right? I'm going to grow some good food for you, but you're going to have to pay me for it. And you, you'll come to my farm and, and buy it from me, or a grocery store will come and buy it, and I'll have this money that I made from this food. And then when I get sick, then I need something, so I'm going to go to a doctor, but I've got to pay him. Aha! That is free market capitalism. See how that works and how it's a polar opposite of the communist system? However, I said ownership by the few. That seems odd. Uh, it's confusing. I mean, free market capitalism, it kind of sounds very uh, equal opportunity. You can do whatever you want. You want to be a farmer, a doctor, a lawyer? Well, do it. Whatever you want to do. And that's true. There is a lot of opportunity. But over time, wealth in a purely capitalist society, wealth becomes very concentrated and consolidated into fewer and fewer and fewer hands. One need look no further than the United States and some real world examples here to understand this principle. Pick Walmart. Everybody knows Walmart. Walmart was a private business held by Sam Walton, a private man, a private individual who said, I'm going to take my private money and I'm going to go start this business. I'm going to buy stuff and put it in a warehouse and sell it to people. And he did so awesome at it that his business grew, which is what capitalism is all about. You do good, you make more money. And he consolidated more wealth to himself. And he said, well, let's grow our business more. And they grew so much and so big and so awesome because they do it so well. Sorry, Walmart haters. They do it well. Their empire grew and grew and grew, consolidating wealth to the Walton family and the CEOs and the stockholders of Walmart. And they're putting other businesses out of businesses who can't compete. So wealth is going from, say, 100 businesses that used to do what Walmart does. Now Walmart's just left and they are consolidating all that wealth. And that's how you get those Sam Waltons and the Rockefellers and the Bill Gates, people who do things really well and grow their business and they get really, 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 really rich. <laughs> and that sounds awesome too. What's the problem? Well, let's talk about problems. Those two systems in their purest forms are the edges, the absolute extreme left and right edges of the economic spectrum. Where does pure communism or pure capitalism exist in today's world? Nowhere. Jot that down. Nowhere. I know, I know what you're thinking. Oh, I, I, I thought the United States was capitalist, and I thought other countries are capitalist, and I thought China was becoming capitalist. Yes, capitalism does exist, but not pure capitalism. And of course, you know, pure communism, everybody's given up on that, except the diehard North Koreans, perhaps. Now, why? Am I suggesting these two systems in their pure forms fail all the time and could perhaps never actually come about? Let's look at communism first. What's wrong with communism? Why does it always fail? It looks great on paper. I mean, it's an equal society where all the needs of everybody are met. There shouldn't be anybody sick. There shouldn't be any impoverished, no poverty. I mean, everybody is part of the system. What's wrong with that? It looks fantastic on paper. It's just too damn complicated. It's too complicated. Economies are extremely complex, especially in today's world. They're so damn huge. 
And you can't have a small group of government bureaucrats deciding where every farm uh, is supposed to be, where every 7-Eleven is supposed to be, where every grocery store, where every doctor's office. You can, A small group of people, what the hell does a small group of government bureaucrats know about growing corn or legal advice or, or what doctors do? They don't. And so it's just such a complex, huge system. Anytime a small group of people said, we're going to control it all, they fail. Wham! Flat on their face every time. Look at Russia. Look at China. Look at Cuba. Keep looking wherever they've tried it. It falls down every time. On top of that, communism is very easily corrupted. Very easily. Because individuals get greedy. I mean, when you're just distributing out stuff, there are going to be people who are greedy and say, well, I'm going to take more than I need. I'm going to stash into here and maybe I'm in charge of distributing stuff and I'm going to get, make sure my friends get all the stuff and I'm not giving shit to people I don't like. So the system is easily corruptible and on top of that, and perhaps most important, communism in practice becomes extremely stagnant. Why Overwhelmingly stagnant. Now, why would I suggest that? In a communist system, when you're just providing whatever you do, you work really hard and you just give it away and then you go get stuff for free from other people. Why would anybody work hard? <laughs> Why? If I work a million hours a week and Joe Blow next door works two hours a week because he's a lazy bum, we're going to get the same. He's going to get the same benefits I do. He's going to get the same food I do. He's going to get the same doctor services I do. So why the hell would I work a million hours a week? I'm not going to. In fact, I'm going to work less than him. And on top of that, why would I have any impetus to innovate or to risk anything or to go start a new business or to try new technology? Why? Why would I? I already get all the food I need. Everything's free. I already get the doctors. I already get everything. It becomes extremely stagnant actually very quickly. Corrupted and stagnant. Communism just does not play out well. It's an unruly thing to try to control all the economy and keep it robust and going. Communism fails at it. Why does capitalism fail at it? Well, first off, it looks great on paper, just like the communist thing. I mean, equal opportunity, you go out and work really hard, build a better mousetrap, you can make more money and do great things. And yes, that sounds fantastic. But in a purely capitalist society, there is too much consolidation of wealth into too few of hands, which does make for a stagnant situation as well, particularly when you have uh, idiot savant kids who inherit all of the wealth from their innovative uh, and hustle and bustle grandparents and parents who built the empire. And these, you know, once, once it trickles down, these kids are millionaires when they're born and they just hang out in country clubs and do virtually nothing their whole lives, thus binding all that money and wealth that could be doing other things in society. More important than that, when you have very few people that own almost all the wealth, this limits opportunity in the society as a whole for way too many people. There may be a whole bunch of people over in the poor masses side who are real innovators, who could build a better mousetrap, who could make things better and start a really vibrant business, but they don't have the capital. They don't have the means to do it. So that consolidation of wealth overall for the society makes things semi-stagnant too. On top of that, capitalism is easily corruptible as well, especially when you get to the big companies and big corporations, which get bigger and bigger and bigger over time. These guys get greedy. The bigger they get, the more they want, the more the stockholders demand to be paid no matter what. Lie, cheat, and steal, whatever, as long as the bottom line means that we get more money. And they can do this because they have exceptional amounts of power as they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Things like working their uh, workers to death for pennies on the dollar or polluting the environment or a whole host of things that they can get away with once you're so powerful you can do anything you want. So easily corruptible turns into a sour situation. Overall, the society becomes way too lopsided. Too much wealth disparity. That is, too few people hold almost all the cards and you have the impoverished masses, like 90 or 95% of the people that have nothing. And this makes, eventually, a very unstable situation for the state as a whole. What do I mean by that? Well, you think about this. In a society where 5% of the people own everything and the 95% of the people own nothing, where can that lead. I, it can only lead to revolution because you're going to get somebody in the 95% of the poor masses like me, some crazy ass, who's going to stand up one day and say, what the hell is this? There's 95% of us. Let's go kick the 5%'s ass and take all their shit. And that's what happens. That's how revolutions occur. Too lopsided, too much wealth disparity in a purely capitalist system. I'm saying those were the purely capitalist and communist systems we just described. 
They don't exist anywhere. So where are most economies at then? Somewhere in the center, as usual, somewhere in the form of socialism. Oh, I know, it's a scary word to some Americans. Socialism is a system where the government owns some of the production or some of the resources or perhaps a little bit of both and the rest is privately held in individuals' hands. A mixed system. The government does some, private business does some. Most economic systems in the world are in a shade of socialist mixed systems. I like it or not, you know, I'm, I ain't trying to offend anybody because I know there's people going, ah, that's a socialism. That's a bad word to a whole bunch of Americans. That's just a shade off of the evil communism crap. OMG, am I some damn liberal ass pinko commie college professor trying to indoctrinate you to love socialism? Hell no. But look at what your state or society does, what it provides for its citizens, and look at the root of the word itself, and you tell me what's going on here. Let's, let's break it down. Socialism, social, society. It's an economic system that accounts for at least some needs of the society at large. How much or how little depends on the state itself and how they want to work it out. Almost all states on the planet provide something for their peoples. At a minimum, protection, like a military or police. At a maximum, a whole hell of a lot more, like free education, free healthcare, free money in the way of welfare or unemployment benefits. And almost all states have a private sector. I mean, you got the holdouts like North Korea and Cuba, but they're getting ready to collapse anyway. Almost every state has a private sector, private business, private individuals. But even in all those states, the government will also have laws that regulate, regulate or control the private businesses so that they don't get too powerful or too greedy or too abusive to their workers or to the environment or overall to the society. Does that make sense? Is that such a bad word? Now, as I said, how much or how little the government is involved in the economy depends on the state itself and how much they want to do. And we still kind of apply these old labels, capitalist and communism, to some of these states where they best fit. Meaning, if a state, state government, owns little to none of the resources and controls little to any of the businesses at all, and regulates the private businesses very little, or provides very few services, we would say that they are a capitalist society. Yeah, I know, I'm not trying to confuse you. Every place does something, but if you're way over there, not doing too much, not providing huge amounts of services, not really controlling or regulating the economy that much, not owning the resources, then you'd say that's a capitalist leaning economy, a capitalist society. The United States would fall into this category. Yes, we provide lots of stuff, but overall we don't control. The government does not overtly own the resources or the means of production in the United States. So they're a capitalist economy. The opposite holds true as well. Any state that controls a lot of stuff, outright controls the resources, outright controls the industry, heavily regulates the private sector, uh, and or gives a shit ton of benefits to its peoples, would be on the left side of the economic spectrum. Uh, and we would call them full-on socialist economies. You'll hear them referred to openly as socialist economies. Or even communist economies when, they, uh, when people want to get into really nasty name-calling. I mean, there are open socialist economies out there. You think of places like Sweden or Finland. They provide tremendous amounts of social benefits to their citizens. I mean, in Sweden, if you're a woman and get pregnant, when you have a baby in Sweden, you get two years paid maternity leave. Paid by the government. That's a huge social service. That's the government giving you a bunch of stuff. Now, would you consider them communists? No, but they're heavily socialist. Many European countries are heavily socialist, provide a lot of stuff, and they may control some of the industries in order to make the money to pay for that stuff. But really, it's only when you get to the extreme, extreme left, and again, it's usually negative name calling where you call out communist. Oh, they're getting too far to the left. They're controlling too much their communist economy. 
Remember back to the health care debate here in the United States and make this real. All the conservatives, center-right Republicans, and the Tea Party tea baggers were all screaming that liberal left-wing Obama was driving the country onto the slippery slope of socialism, and that it would just be a hop, skip, and a jump to full-on communism. Ah! People are outright calling him a communist, which is kind of preposterous in today's world. Communist? Really? Communist? Ah! That communist crap is sacrilege! It's against tradition and even against the natural order that humanity has established over the millennium of experience. Free market works best. Let people do what they're going to do and everything will sort itself out. Those guys want to take our hard-earned money and distribute it to all the poor slackers. It's blasphemy. Let people do what they want to do. It's for the best. Oh, you capitalist swine are all the same. Your system concentrates wealth in the hands of few, thus ensuring poverty for the masses. You really are only making money off the backs of the poor masses toiling in your factories. Workers unite! Well, those are interesting points because they're both kind of right. This shift towards the economic left side of the spectrum is kind of a newer phenomenon on the world stage, much like the political system stuff we talked about last lecture. Remember, we talked about the world political spectrum, and we saw those liberal left systems which cropped up in the last couple hundred years, like communism and representative democracy, and asked, oh, what did these things evolve in response to? Why just the last couple hundred years? And they evolved in response to the ultra concentration of political power in systems like monarchy, one party states, theocracies. And that has been the tradition for most of human history. In similar light, the world economic spectrum, liberal left side, things like communism and socialism, those are products of the last couple hundred years too for much the same reasons. They evolved in response to ultra concentrations of economic wealth and power into hands of fewer and fewer under free market, full-on, unregulated capitalism. And not just capitalism broadly, but actually a very specific time and place. And that was the Industrial Revolution of Western Europe about three or 400 years ago. As the world started to mechanize and industrialize, in Europe where they started all this stuff, you had factory owners who were started producing these big warehouse style manufacturing firms where they were packing in workers to run the mills and paying them pennies on the dollar and what the hell, we got to give the kids something to do so throw the three year olds in there as well, get them out of diapers, get them to work. And what do you do with all the pollution from our industry? Ah, just dump it in the Thames River right here in London. So uh, atrocious, atrocious work environments and environmental pollution and concentrations of wealth in the factory owner's hands while the masses became impoverished during the Industrial Revolution in Western Europe got European thinkers thinking. Folks like Marx and Engels and other communist slash socialist writers who started to say, what the hell is going on with this? This is horrific. Look what this handful of people is doing to our society. We need to step in. We need a more equitable society. We need a solution that makes things more equal for people economically. And their solutions most often entail the use of the government itself to make things right, to redistribute power, or to at least regulate those businesses so they can't do all the horrific things and establish things like a minimum wage and, and they can't pollute. Starting to understand the bigger picture of why those liberal left economic and political systems evolved just in the last couple hundred years. Now, this debate about the role of the state versus private business in the economic spectrum rages in every society. Uh, and new leaders and new laws change the economic equation all the time in countries the world over. The current economic meltdown and worldwide recession caused the United States and many other capitalist countries to intervene directly into the economy and heavily regulate industry and even take over some industries. You probably heard reference or remember this stuff. And that's moving to the liberal left even further. And in places like China, they've been exploding economically for the last 20 years since they fully embraced free market capitalism. They're actually lurching to the right. So things change. Don't assume that these systems are stagnant. But please do know 
the left-right differences in governmental approach to their economies, what motivates liberal or conservative economic policy, and why it is just as laughable to refer to the Chinese economy as communist as it is to call U.S. President Barack Obama a commie. <laughs> Not when you know what's really going on.